Hey there, this is our result from the last tutorial. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm gonna link it up there and of course in the video description down below. We created a sort of a little animation system in Geometry Nodes and we used the new closures feature in Geometry Nodes to plug in our own easing curve and then the animation system takes care of that. Now, what I wanna do today is I wanna clean up some things because uh, there's some things I don't like. And then uh, the one thing that really bothers me is uh, this noodle here. And I'm gonna show you uh, a few ways that we can fix this. So let's jump right in. Uh, what do I wanna clean up? Let's check out inside of the animation system. Uh, you remember, this is very simple. All we are doing is we have a start and an end frame and then we're essentially translating our geometry from this vector to this vector. So this is the first thing I don't like. I didn't name this properly. It's just still called just A and B. So I'm just gonna call it from and to. And then also the closure is just called closure, but I think I wanna rename this to easing. Okay, now let's jump back out. And the next thing I wanna fix is inside of this node. I'm not sure how familiar you are with how Geometry Nodes actually works and how the uh, fields system works. I have videos here on the channel. They're a bit older now, but they're still valid. The fields in, ge in Geometry Nodes, you kind of have to read from right to left. So let's think about this. Let's go back in here. So this set position node takes the input geometry. In this case, it's a mesh because it's our donut and it executes whatever it has to do on each vertex of the input mesh. Now, what does it have to execute? Well, it has to set an offset. Where's that coming from? From this mix node. Uh, the A and B are coming from our input vectors. So this is from and to, and we're mixing using this value. Where's that value coming from? So we have to read from right to left. And then we're evaluating a closure. So essentially we have to jump out of this and look at where is this uh, closure coming from? So it's coming from the elastic. So let's jump into the elastic. And again, from right to left, where is this value coming from? It's evaluating another closure. Okay, let's ignore that for now. Um, we could jump into that and look, uh, look at that, but um, we know what it's doing. It's just that um, a float curve that makes the bouncy stuff. So where's that coming from? Okay, from this float curve and this factor is coming from here. And this input value down here, this is plugged into the value here, is coming from here and then this is coming from here. So we read all the way from right to left and we ended up here. And this position node is actually the position of the vertex that our set position node is currently handling. So the set position node is a loop and it looks at every single vertex and it ex executes that thing that we just looked at for every single vertex. It goes from right to left till all the way to the beginning of that uh, noodle or that workflow or whatever program, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this is where we end up. And this is the position node, the position of the vertex. Okay. Now, we have the same thing over here. We have the position over here. Is this a different position than that? Well, not really, because in that workflow, looking from right to left, um, the algorithm ends up here and it goes position. Okay, I know what position is. It's the position of the vector. So it really doesn't matter if we have this plugged in or if we just use this value. When the algorithm starts at the the end there at the set position node and then backtracks all the way to this node it goes okay it's a position node i know what that is that's the position of the vertex that i'm currently working on so this now is the same as with these two duplicated over here so this is a little bit cleaner however and this is our next thing that we want to fix this elastic node here has the geometry input so the geometry comes in here and what do we need that for? We only need that for the attribute statistics node. Um, and that's kind of a bummer, right? Because as we just proved, the entire node tree knows what geometry it's working on. Otherwise, that whole backtracking and taking the position of the vertex wouldn't work. So the node tree coming from this animation, from the set position, this is the geometry we're working on. And then the closure doesn't know what geometry it's working on, even though it knows all of its fields. Okay, so I find this a little bit annoying. And I was thinking, okay, how can we uh, work around this? 
Now, the animation node in here knows the geometry that it's working on. So one way would be to just give the geometry to the closure. So now the closure has access to the geometry. We don't need to plug it into our node group. We can go in here and we can take the group input and remove the geometry. We don't need this anymore because now we get it from the closure. So the closure now has the geometry. And that whole backtracking thing still works. And the closure, when it's being executed in here, has access to the geometry. We could put a reroute in here that it's working on. So this is working on the same geometry as this. And now our closure can access the geometry just from the input parameters of the closure itself. Okay, that makes it much cleaner out here because we still have the geometry. This node now gets the geometry at the point of execution from the animation system. But what if I don't want the elastic? What if I just want the bounce two times? Now this says there's an error because that's that node in here says there's an error. And the error is the closure does not have an input geometry. Now, I personally think that this is not an error. Why? Because we're giving our evaluate node more information than the actual closure that's plugged in needs. And if it has more information than it needs, that's that's probably not even a warning. That, should, that could be sort of an information so that when you put this together, you know, uh, or you can see here, okay, hey, I just want to let you know, um, your closure is not handling any geometry, which is fine in this case, because it's just the bounce two times animation. It doesn't need any geometry. So I don't know why this is an error. I don't think it should be an error. And uh, let me know in the comment down below if you agree with me. Okay, so this is one way to fix this, and it looks much cleaner out here. Um, these nodes still can access the geometry because we know that the animation system inside here actually provides the geometry to the closure. Now, expanding on that idea, what else might our closure want access to? Well, I would say, all of these things, start frame, end frame, from and to vectors. The value from here we already get in the closure. So basically all of these things. Now we could plug all of these in, or we could do something else that actually comes with this experimental closures feature, and that's called a bundle. I have a video here on the channel, first look at bundles in the new geometry nodes of Blender 5. So I was thinking, uh, we should just bundle all of this together so we are inside of our animation system, right? So we bundle this together, the geometry, the start frame, the end frame, the from and the to. Maybe our closure or maybe the users, the customer's closure wants access to these for whatever reason. And there's a few reasons I can think of why you wouldn't want to access this. And then we plug this bundle in here, okay? So this is not a geometry now. Oh, let me remove this and uh, redo this. Okay, so the evaluate gets the bundle. And it's called bundle, which I don't like. So on this note here, I would call this context. So we're evaluating this closure with this value inside of this context. And the context is just all of the other information that we have at this point in our workflow. So the closure is not getting a geometry, so let's remove that. It's actually getting a bundle called context. So first of all, the names have to match. We have to call it context, and it's a bundle. And from this context bundle, we can now separate out our geometry. And that's called geometry inside of the bundle. So this should be fine now. Okay, the group input, can move that over here. This is just the group input, group output. If for some reason we create a closure that needs the access to the maybe the end position, we could take that from our context bundle as well. So this I think now is really, really clean. Doing this, we still have the issue that this uh, shows this error. Funny thing though with this error is, 
it doesn't matter. So <laughs> it's not really an error. Um, like I said, why would this be an error? We're giving more information to the closure than what the closure actually requires. So yeah, man, the closure can just ignore it like this one actually does. It's not using any bundle. It's not using the geometry or anything. It just uses the value. Last thing though, before I forget that this elastic node group here also takes in a closure. And again, this should be called easing just like here. So this should be called easing too. So let's fix that real quick on the group. This evaluates another easing closure. And this evaluate closure node should also get the context because of course that easing function that we plug in here might also need access to the geometry or the vectors or whatever. If you haven't seen the other two closure videos, I will link them down below. If you want to know more about bundles, I have a video here on the channel for that as well. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, post an emoji down below. Thanks for watching, liking and subscribing. See you soon.